myself, Assistant Professor Hema Singh from Khalsa College of Law, Amritsar. My today's topic for the presentation is Assessment of Tax and its Type under Income Tax Act 1961. In a welfare state, every government takes the responsibility for the welfare of its citizens, as in the matter of health care, education, employment, infrastructure and other development needs. To facilitate these, the government needs the revenue. The taxation is the primary source of revenue to the government for incurring such public welfare expenditure. A tax is a mandatory fee or a financial charge levied on the individual by the government for collecting the revenue. There are two types of taxes, direct tax and indirect tax. Direct taxes are those taxes that are to be paid directly to the government by the assessee or the legal entities. These taxes are overlooked by the central board of direct taxes. For instance, income tax. Indirect taxes are those taxes that are levied on the products and services. These taxes are not directly paid to the government. In fact, these taxes are collected by the sellers and sellers are under obligation to pay such taxes to the government. These taxes are added to the price of the product and services. Indirect taxes are those taxes which are overlooked by the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and the Customs. Currently in India, there is only one indirect tax that is goods and service tax. Constitutional validity of taxes. The constitution of India is the supreme law of land and all the laws must be consistent with its provisions. The provisions relating to tax are contained under article 265 to 289 of the Indian constitution. These articles outlines the powers of the union and the state to levy the taxes as well as the procedures for assessing and collecting the taxes. Article 265 of the Indian constitution states that no tax shall be levied or collected except by the authority of law. Article 246 read with Schedule 7 of the Indian constitution divides the subject matter made by the legislature into three lists, the union list, the state list and the concurrent list. Entry 82 of the union list deals with the taxes on the income other than agricultural income. Entry 46 of the state list deals with the taxes on the agricultural income. The income tax is a tax that is levied on the total income of the SEC which may be regarded as a person under the provisions of Income Tax Act 1961 for the relevant previous year. As the income tax is levied on the total income of the person, it is important to understand the term person. Under Income Tax Act 1961, a person includes an individual, a Hindu undivided family, a company, a partnership firm, an association of person or body of individual, a local authority and any other artificial juridical persons. Section 2, subsection 7 of the Income Tax Act defines assessee. An assessee means any person who is liable to pay any tax or any sum of money under this act. The year in which the income is earned, that is the financial year, immediately preceding the assessment year is known as the previous year. In the year in which the tax shall be paid is the next year to the previous year is known as the assessment year. Every taxpayer is supposed to uh, follow the uniform previous year that is the financial year starting from 1st April and ending on 31st March. For the purpose of the computation of the total income of the taxpayer, it is important to classify the income into five heads. Income from salary, income from house property, income from profits and gains from business and profession, income from capital gains and income from other sources. Section 139 subsection 1 of the Income Tax Act states that every taxpayer whose total income exceeds the basic exemption limit is liable to pay or to furnish the income tax return within the due date. 
the due date for the filing of income tax return for the assessment year 2023 to 2024 is 31st July. For except for the corporate assesses and the non-corporate assesses whose books of accounts are required to be audited. As per the Income Tax Act, the taxpayer can pay the tax either according to the old tax regime or according to the new tax regime. Under the old tax regime, the basic exemption limit for the individual below 60 years or for Hindu undivided family is rupees 2.5 lakhs and the basic exemption limit for the senior citizen is rupees 3 lakhs and the basic exemption limit for the super senior citizen is rupees 5 lakh. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman has announced significant changes in the income tax lab rates under the new tax regime in Budget 2023. The basic exemption limit is hiked to Rs 3 lakhs from Rs 2.5 lakhs. The standard deduction benefit of Rs 50,000 is now extended to salaried persons as well as to pensioners in the new tax regime. Now let us discuss about the assessment. Every taxpayer is liable to furnish the information relating to his total income to the in income tax department. Such information shall be furnished by filing the income tax return under the Income Tax Act 1961. Once the ITR is filed by the taxpayer, the next step is the processing of such income by the IT department. The IT department examines such return for its correctness. The process of examining the inform income tax return is known as the assessment. The term assessment has different meanings. Sometimes it means the computation of total income. Sometimes it means the determination of the taxable income. Sometimes it means the whole procedure laid down under the Income Tax Act 1961 for imposing the liability upon the taxpayer. The assessment includes reassessment, as well as the best judgment assessment under the provisions of Income Tax Act 1961. There are five types of assessment, self-assessment, regular assessment, scrutiny assessment, best judgment assessment and the reassessment. The first type of assessment is self-assessment. Before filing the income tax return, the taxpayer is supposed to find whether he is liable to pay the tax or any interest for any delay under the provisions of Income Tax Act or not. For this purpose, Section 140A of the Income Tax Act has been introduced as amended by the Finance Act 2005. The process of calculating the income as well as the payment of the tax when done by the taxpayer himself is known as the self-assessment. The IT department has provided number of IT forms for filing the income tax return. The taxpayer consolidates all the incomes from different sources and setting it off with losses, deductions, exemptions so available to him. The second type of assessment is the regular assessment. The, it is the preliminary reassessment and is also referred to as the summary assessment without calling the assessee. The second type of assessment is the regular assessment. It is the preliminary reassessment and is also referred to as a summary assessment. It is one of the major type of assessment as it strives to cross check the information submitted by the taxpayer in the income tax return. At this stage, no detailed scrutiny of the return is carried out. As per section 143, subsection 1 of the Income Tax Act, if any return has been filed under section 139, subsection 1, or in compliance of a notice under section 142, subsection 1 of the Income Tax Act, if any tax or any sum is due uh, on the basis of the income tax return, an intimation shall be sent to an assessee specifying the amount so payable and if any sum is due, if any refund is due, the same shall be sent 
or delivered to the assessee on serving a notice to the assessee. According to section 143 subsection 2, a scrutiny notice shall be served on the assessee by the assessing officer where the assessing officer has a reason to believe that any relief claimed or any deduction made or any exemption claimed in the income tax return is inadmissible and require him and require an assessee to produce such documents or the evidences on which the assessee may rely in support of such claims. The third type of assessment is the scrutiny assessment where the assessing officer has made the in detailed scrutiny of the return for its correctness, genuineness and the authenticity of the deductions, exemptions, relief or claims made under the provisions of Income Tax Act in its income tax return. The third type of assessment is the scrutiny assessment where the assessing officer has done in detailed scrutiny of the return to check its correctness, genuineness and the authenticity of the deductions, claims, exemptions, relief made under the income tax return. The objective of the scrutiny assessment is to check whether the taxpayer has not undercomputed the income or has not underpaid the tax. If the assessing officer has reason to believe that the taxpayer has undercomputed his income or has underpaid the tax, the assessing officer shall serve a notice requiring him to attend his office and also to produce such evidences and the documents on which the assessee may rely in support of such claims. The fourth type of assessment is the best judgment assessment. There are certain conditions where the assessing officer has a power to make the assessment to the best of its judgment. This type of assessment is not based on the return. This is an ex party assessment which the assessing officer made to the best of its judgment. This assessment is also known as assessment on default as the assessee is in default in making or in furnishing the income tax return within the due date. There are two types of assessment discretionary best judgment assessment and compulsory best judgment assessment. The last type of assessment is the income escaping assessment or reassessment where the assessing officer has a reason to believe that any income which is taxable under the provisions of Income Tax Act has escaped income in any assessment year, the assessing officer assesses or reassesses such income which has been escaped or when it comes to his knowledge during the course of proceedings. Thank you.